Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So a while back I made a video of a blade sculpture that I painted probably about five or six years ago and it was the Wesley Snipes portrait on it. And I've been getting a lot of questions on how did I paint that portrait? What did I use as far as paint method? So I decided today we're gonna do a video and show you about dark skin tones. And in today's video, you guessed it, we're gonna use another blade sculpture. So the blade sculpture I'm using today was designed by Dennis Zowry. It is a more of a comic type uh, piece, a little bit different than what I'm used to, but we're gonna try some realistic skin tones. I'm gonna to show you a quick and easy way how to do this. So I printed this in a quarter scale, so it is very big, so you can see a lot of the detail and a lot of what goes into it. So enough of the talking, let's get into the video, all right? So this model is pretty simple to uh, go over. There's only three major parts for the skin tones, which is the head sculpt like this. And of course we'll do the tattoo on the back and do the hair and the eyes. And then of course there's the arms that also have the tattoo on there. And we'll do some shading on there, show you how to do that with dark skin tones. And that's pretty much it. Now we're gonna be doing a lot of these tones with these couple of colors here, which is a, a chocolate brown and a flat earth brown. And then my own mix of my pink undertone that I use for all of my skin tones and maybe just a tad bit of white. So there we go. So for time's sake, I've pretty much got all of the parts painted black and sealed so I can actually handle them as far as the torso and the legs and boots, and then the hands, uh, the gun, the sword, uh, the glasses, pretty much all the stuff is already done. That way we don't have to waste time on the video to go over the stuff again. So the one thing to understand is that dark skin tones work pretty much just the same way as light skin tones do. You're just working with a darker pigment. You're still gonna see the blood under the skin. You're still gonna see the shades, the light, the highlights and everything like that as well. And you're going to see the in-depth contrast. Uh, just because it's a dark skin tone doesn't mean everything is saturated in a dark tone. Uh, you're gonna have to go out and pick those uh, areas where the light comes in, uh, where the skin recesses and the light socket or the eye sockets and the ears and the under the chin and everything like that. So that's going to determine on what your light source is or whether you're just going to do it kind of a realistic approach. Today's approach is we're going to take and do it in a hyper realistic form. So there won't be a lot of dark shading or deep shading into the recesses under the chin, under the eyes and everything like that. I usually like to let the natural light kind of make up its own mind of where it's going to go in and uh, poke out those highlights and see where the, uh, the low lights or the undercuts or whatever like that are going to be. All right. So one thing I do like to do on darker skin tones is I do like to work light to dark and I will pretty much just go in and lay down a general base coat. Okay, so now that I've got the base coats, what I'm gonna do is this undertone pink that I've got right here that I've mixed up, I'm actually gonna go ahead and just load some of that in my brush and add a little bit of water and I'm not gonna clean my brush out because I want some of that brown in there. Probably need a little bit more in there. So what I'm gonna do is, it's gonna give me a really good undertone here, probably add just a tad more and mixing it really good and then I'm going to go under the undertones as far as the lips, the eyes and around the, the ears and stuff like that and I'm going to go in and add this to that.
All right, so what I'm gonna do on the arms is I'm gonna highlight some of the areas where the blood may flow closer to the skin. And then we'll go in and we'll do some shading right before we do the tattoo. So now I'm going to use this German black brown from the Vallejo's Panzer series for the shading on the face and on the arms. Uh, I don't use this color very often. Uh, the only time I really use it is during uh, dark skin tones. Uh, it is a good combination of a little bit of black and a lot of dark brown, uh, and it really accentuates the undercuts and everything on skin tones. so at this stage you can go in and add more highlights if you want um, you can lighten up the skin if you want with a lighter shade of brown uh, but what I am going to do now is I'm gonna I'm gonna do the eyes and do the tattoo on the back of the head and do the hairline and then I'm gonna move to the arms uh, as you can see this is well shaded and uh, this is what I really want to uh, accomplish here a little bit of a, a darker skin tone a darker darker skin tone with a little bit of highlights in it like we got and then I'm going to look and decide if I want to add any more highlights a little bit of lighter brown maybe in the cheekbones uh, on the forehead or on the bridge of the nose um, but at this point I'm kind of liking how it looks this is a Wesley Snipes type sculpt so we want to get it uh, close to uh, Wesley's uh, skin tone as much as possible so as a tip, when you do the eyes, try to use like an off-white. Don't use a solid white or a cold white because it's going to be way too bright for you. And don't use an ivory because it's going to have a yellow tint to it. Uh, an off-white is a very good uh, color to use for the, uh, for the eyes and the uh, maybe the teeth as well. Okay, so first things first on the eyes, I'm going to put my little line for the top of the eyelash. Now we move on to the whites of the eyes. Now that I got the whites of the eyes in, um, it's easy on a quarter scale piece like this to cover up the black line, so it's much easier to go back in and put it in. So I probably should have put it in uh, after I did the white, and so uh, we'll go in and we'll touch that up. And then uh, right now, so after doing that, we will add the pupil and uh, add the iris, and uh, we'll finish up the rest of the face, like the mustache, and we'll do a little bit more to the lips.
All right, so the eyes are done. I'm gonna go in and add the eyebrows, start on the hairline and start on the tattoo. But uh, the sculpt is good. However, it just does not look like Wesley Snipes. It kind of looks more like Eddie Murphy at this point. So maybe once we get the glasses and the tattoo and everything, um, it's still a nice sculpt. Um, but it shows us, you know, uh, how we can do uh, dark skin tones and that's all that's important right now at this point. And, um, but I think it's turning out pretty good. We're hitting the highlights. We're doing the undercuts the way they need to be done. Um, that's the most important part that I wanted to show you. And as far as the arms are concerned, uh, how to shade the arms for a dark skin tone. Um, you can lighten it up if you want to. You can uh, do whatever you want. It all works the same way as a normal uh, white skin tone. Um, you're just using a darker pigment so it's however you want to do it uh, the method is still the same all right so the tattoo is done that is all freehand. There is nothing masking off right there, guys. Um, so if you ever do a model like this, be prepared to be patient and take your time. So with a couple of quick little tweaks and getting all the mustache and tattoo and hair all done and getting it sealed, we're going to go ahead and put this thing together and see how it looks. One thing I did do on the torso is I did add another gun. Um, it only had one in the original design, but I remember Blade had two guns. And uh, yeah, this is more of a comic book style, a little bit different than what I'm used to. It is a nice sculpt, but it doesn't look like Wesley Snipes once it's painted. Um, but it is still a nice sculpt. Uh, I did print it big for the sake of doing so, and uh, I just wanted to print a really nice size blade statue, and that's what I did. So I didn't print a base for this or anything uh, because I had the intention of doing a wooden base, a little bit different than what the figure came with. And so I'll do that later on. Uh, the main thing of this video is to check and see how I did the uh, skin tones on it, show you a quick and easy way. That way you can do dark skin tones as well. And hey, while we're at it, I'd be foolish not to tell you about my Patreon that I have. Link in the description below. I do have another member added to it. And I'd like to welcome aboard Alias Al Macam. And if you'd like to become the newest member of the Patreon, click on that link below. Hey guys, and I do want to take this time to thank each and every one of you. We made it to 3,000 subscribers. That is a huge monumental uh, milestone in my eyes. Uh, we're just a little small channel, but this is proof that we're growing. I could not do it without your support. So we're going to keep trucking along here. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I do appreciate each and every one of you guys. All right, so there you have it, guys. 
Hope that was a quick and easy way for you to understand how to do dark skin tones. There's many different variations that you can do. There really is no right or wrong way. This is just a simple method that I use every now and then. Just wanna pass it along to you all. Hopefully you get something out of it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and make sure, make sure that you hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss out on any future videos. And until the next video, everybody, stay safe out there. Thank you to my patrons and we'll see you. So I guess this means I'm worthy? Probably not. <laughs>